What's up everybody on YouTube, AJ Rose back to discuss another video, and today we will be talking about Kyrie Irving requesting a trade from the Brooklyn Nets six days before the NBA trade deadline. So today, as of this recording right now, the Brooklyn Nets currently sit in the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference, and this will, you know, change obviously because we don't know where Kyrie will be dealt, and then Kevin Durant coming back in a few weeks, but really it sucks because the Brooklyn Nets have been playing the best basketball of the season now, granted with KD being in now, they have... Um, have a 4-6 and six record in the past 10 games, I believe, in their last 10. But even regardless of that, um, it's unfortunate because the Nets were playing the best basketball that they have in this KD and Kyrie area so far. Over the past few years of Kyrie's tenure in Brooklyn, there's been a lot of, you know, different things that are taking place off the court. He's been missing a lot of time, and he hasn't been as available as the Nets would want him to be or as anyone on that team would want him to be. And so far this year, besides, the obviously, the tweets that he tweeted out earlier this season, him missing some time due to that, but besides that, in the past, like, couple of months, he's been playing consistent and great basketball. And just voted into his eighth All-Star game, averaging 27 points per game, five rebounds, and five assists on this season. He's been playing really great basketball, and then now just to see this happen when the Nets were playing the best they have in the past few years after you know signing Kyrie in 2019 and KD in 2019 and then dealing with the James Harden drama and trading him last season um we see that Kyrie ass is out so it's really just a crazy thing like is Kyrie really the most unstable player that we've ever seen in the NBA the most problematic player in the NBA in NBA history there's definitely an argument for it of course um now no one's question is on court ability because when he plays i mean he's arguably the most skilled basketball player of all time not saying that he's the best but in terms of pure skill finishing ability i think that he's for sure the best finisher in the paint among guards in nba history i don't even think that's a debate to be honest with you but in terms of you know being a skilled basketball player i mean he has it at all levels he's a great shooter really an underrated shooter in my opinion like Kyrie is extremely efficient when he plays um and of course he's just a pure scorer but um this isn't even about his basketball talent arguably the best ability for actually it's not even arguable in my opinion the best ability for any nba player is availability if you're not in the court then what are you doing you're in street clothes you're not playing the game of basketball and the frustrating thing about it for Kyrie irving of course he's dealt with some nagging injuries over the years but for the most part of the past couple of years it's just been off the court stuff so i mean really with him i mean that's why people are so hesitant to give Kyrie irving the max contract that's why the nets were so hesitant to do so um like i said he's been doing well with no off the court um bad behavior or anything like that and i feel like i mean we heard pretty much that it was reported that he wanted to get a contract extension from the nets and they didn't want to do that because i mean i don't blame them because you can't you can't trust Kyrie right now um you don't know what'll happen and now that we see that they're not going to give him the extension right now when he wanted them to that he's asking out he said that if y'all ain't gonna give it to me now basically i want out i can see both sides for sure because of course Kyrie he's playing arguably the best basketball of his career and he wants his bag right now but at the same time for the Nets perspective i mean Kyrie hasn't been trustworthy and right now, I mean, he's doing great. I'm sure they were saying, like, if you can continue this, no off-court drama, continue to play great basketball, that they'll revisit things in the offseason. But I don't think Kyrie wanted to wait for that. And I can just see both perspectives of that. But at the end of the day, I mean, Kyrie, I mean, even over the past few weeks, it seemed like Kyrie was all in with the Nets and things like that. And then when you hear about this, it's just deflating for that franchise. Being a top four seed in the East, I mean, people were looking at them competing, of course, with teams like the Celtics, the Nets, the Sixers to potentially make the Eastern Conference Finals and the NBA Finals. But now, I, mean, I don't even know where things are going to be at now. And you got to think about how Kevin Durant feels about things. We all know Kevin Durant asked out last June, but the Nets weren't able to find anything. And rightfully so, because, I mean, you're Kevin Durant. You're arguably the best player in the league. And you're not going to get equal value for that. The Nets would have lost that trade either way you sliced it. So... I don't blame them for not trading him, and it seemed like things were going great. Like I said, before KD got hurt in January, I mean, they were playing great basketball. Kyrie was playing, has been playing great, but now this happens, this ball, this bomb drops like this. I mean, this is very unfortunate. So it seems like the Nets are really going to slip a lot, especially if Kyrie continues his stance. I mean, technically, the Nets really don't have a lot of options in terms of trading him. I saw some mock trades on, you know, ESPN saying that the Lakers could trade for Kyrie, and I saw it on ESPN, and I was like, why didn't, why would the Nets do this? It would be an obvious loss um trading to the lakers getting russell westbrook um and like lonnie walker in a first round pick like no dude like first of all if you have russell westbrook on a team with ben simmons oh my gosh people are going to be sagging all day like you can't play that they're not threats to score from the outside so teams are going to have a field day just sagging and letting them shoot they're going to be screaming he with us because <laughs> they're not going to be respecting their shots and ben simmons definitely not even going to shoot anyways that would be an obvious win for the lakers i mean that's a no-brainer for them because they, I saw the mock trade saying that the Lakers could get Kyrie Irving and Joe Harris. First of all, perimeter shooting, that's what the Lakers need to a T. So that would be perfect for them. But then the Nets getting Russell Westbrook, Lonnie Walker, and a first-round pick. I mean, basically, essentially, all you're getting is a first-round pick. Now, Westbrook has been playing arguably like the sixth man of the year this season, but 
Kevin Durant and Westbrook have already played with each other. I mean, Kevin Durant left the Thunder with Westbrook in 2016 for a reason, so I don't think KD would welcome that idea at all. I also saw a scenario where the Clippers could potentially trade for Kyrie, um, with the Clippers getting just Kyrie Irving and then the Nets trading people like John Wall, Robert Covington, Luke Kennard, and it was one more player, I believe. Um, I mean, those are role players. It will help, but I mean, are you still going to be a contender? I mean, you'll make a play. You'll make the playoffs with KD. So I mean, anything's possible. You have the best player on the court still in the Eastern Conference. Conference. I mean, you can argue with Giannis or KD, but I still think KD is still that dude, all-time great talent. But, I mean, I don't think that really does anything either. Another one that was even debated last season before Kyrie opted into his contract and before potentially, you know, having trade rumors was the Dallas Mavericks receiving Kyrie Irving in a trade. Um, for the Mavericks' perspective, I mean, it makes sense in terms of, you know, getting Lucas some help so he can not be as ball dominant. Um, but... I don't know. That defensive backcourt would be very suspect. Um, I mean, of course, they can both score at a high level. But even if you're the Nets then, I mean, who do you trade for? You try to get Dorian Finley-Sniff? Like, okay, that's fine. You get Spencer Dinwiddie again with a st second stint with the Nets? I mean, okay, he's not replacing Kyrie, though. Tim Hardaway Jr. Tim Hardaway Jr. is underrated, but... I mean, that's not enough. Like I'm saying, you're going to lose the trade anyways. I mean, Kyrie, he didn't even put out a specific list in terms of teams that he wanted to get traded to. So with teams, you know, trading for him, they're not even 100% sure if Kyrie's going to resign with them. So, I mean, that's a huge gamble. So you're not really going to get a lot if you're the Brooklyn Nets. So I could see them trading him, but also I could see them just saying, nah, we're not trading you. But then at the same time, if you do that, then he's just going to walk in the offseason because, dang, you didn't give me my money then. And I balled out and all that things. And despite winning a championship or not, um, I don't want to be here no more because you didn't want to give me my money when I wanted it. So I can see Kyrie taking that same. I don't know. It's just a really dumb situation in my opinion. It's very unfortunate. Like I said, they were playing great basketball. Even they've lost, even though they've they're four and six in the last ten. You're waiting for Kevin Durant to come back to you know help them out. Nick Claxton was playing great basketball. Of course, Ben Simmons. I mean, he's not going to score. But I mean, I don't know. Ben Simmons is a whole another topic for another day. But man, it's just really devastating for Nets fans. But hey. Kyrie Irving, very unpredictable. Now, at face value, Kyrie Irving going to the LA Lakers, that would make the Lakers an instant championship contender, going to a fringe play-in or playoff team to being a championship contender, having Anthony Davis, of course, LeBron James about to pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to be the NBA's all-time leading scorer at the age of 38, averaging 30 points per game, which is insane. You know, a lot of people think he's a GOAT. I'll have a video on that soon, but um, just stay tuned for that. But Kyrie being on that team, and then they just added Rui Hachimura, you know, for some more depth. That would be interesting. But like I said, for the Nets to do that, that would, that would largely cripple them. And I don't think Kevin Durant wants to play with Westbrook again. And, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense for him not to want to play with him. It doesn't make sense for them to trade for Russell Westbrook and getting that Kyrie deal done. So, for me, it's just, it's just a whole mess. I mean, of course, everyone's going to be talking about, you know, a reunion with LeBron. A lot of hoorays and chance for that. For LeBron getting his fifth ring, and I can see that, but it makes no sense for the Nets. If they did that, they're instantly crippling their franchise. And Kevin Durant, I feel like that'll make him want to ask out more, even more like last year. All props to Jacques Vaughn, though, the Nets head coach who came in place for Steve Nash when he was fired earlier this year, because he's been handling things great. Every time he talks to the media, he's very eloquent. Um, you can tell that he commands the locker room. So he's been a great coach for them. So I really feel bad for him. Um, some will feel bad for KD, but at the end of the day, it's Kevin Durant. I mean, if you can find a trade for him, because I feel like if they trade Kyrie, KD, KD's leave is going to be imminent as well. I mean, unless you can bring another superstar, but that's going to be hard to do, especially with this deal. I don't think it's really possible. Now, let me know what y'all think about this whole situation in the comments down below. Of course, this was reported at this time yesterday, because this is when the video is going to be posted. It'll be posted Saturday. The trade request happened on Friday. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that Kyrie Irving isn't an all-time talent because he obviously is. But like I said, availability is key. And I'm not saying that Kyrie is, I mean, he's a terrible person, toxic or anything like that. Some people will say that he's toxic to a franchise, but I don't agree with that. I just think that, man, it's just, it's, it's, it's I don't like it at all, man. I mean, I feel like that, I, I, I understand Kyrie wanting his money, of course. Obviously, I mean, <laughs> you're in the league. You want as much money as you can. And then for him, he's in his early 30s now, 30, turning 31 this year in March, I believe. Um, trying to, you know, get everything set up for that long-term contract because it could be his last long-term contract in the NBA. But at the same time, I mean, that's kind of a poor teammate decision. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's going to be interesting to see how Kevin Durant feels about it. I mean, I'm sure that Kevin Durant knew that Kyrie was going to do this because if he didn't, that's really messed up. So just let me know what y'all think about this whole trade request in the comments down below. I appreciate y'all watching. Always make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at SwaggyRust and also on TikTok at SwaggyRust02 for more cooking videos, shorts, and contents like that. Um, just stay tuned for more sports. Basketball season is coming to a huge ramp up. All-star break soon. Um, playoffs will be here before we know it in a couple months. Um, and yeah, so just stay tuned for more content, all types of videos. And I appreciate y'all. Love.